So, OpenAI's new Model 01 can code an entire video game from a simple prompt. Take a look. The coding prompt is to write the code for a very simple video game called Squirrel Finder. And the reason O1 Preview is better at doing prompts like this is when it wants to write a piece of code, it thinks before giving the final answer. So it can use the thinking process to plan out the structure of the code, make sure it fits the constraints. So let's try pasting this in. And to give a brief overview of the prompt, um, the game Squirrel Finder basically has a koala that you can move using the arrow keys. Um, strawberries spawn every second and they bounce around. And you want to avoid the strawberries. After three seconds, a squirrel icon comes up and you want to find the squirrel to win. What I always find to be very impressive is when a language model is able to take conversational English and then transform it into technical language and then activate on that technical language. And there are a few other instructions like um, putting OpenAI in the game screen and displaying instructions before the game starts, etc. So first you can see that the model thought for 21 seconds before giving the final answer. And you can see that during its thinking process, it is gathering details on the game's layout, mapping out the instructions, setting up the screen, etc. And so here's the code that it gave. And I will paste it into a, uh, to a window, and we'll see if it works. So you see there's instructions. Um, and let's try to play the game. Oh, the squirrel came very quickly. But, oops, this time I was hit by a strawberry. Let's try again. You can see that the strawberries are appearing. Uh, and let's see if I can win by finding the squirrel. Looks like I won. A lot of coders are going to lose their jobs. It's going to be a handful of coders doing a lot of coders' jobs. That's what's going to happen. Right now, most of the programming model we already have, they all kind of suck. But at the same time, I think AI models are getting better every single day. And if there's any coder out there who thinks AI won't be able to take his job in the coming years, I think that guy is delusional because it's going to keep getting better. My guess is that I think most of the work that junior developers are doing right now is going to get replaced by AI within next two to three years. So OpenAI01 can handle complex maths as well. Take a look at this demo. So one of my favorite puzzles that I would do when I was a little kid is called a nonogram, where you're given an empty grid and then some numerical clues that tell you which squares in the grid you have to fill in. And I thought we could have the model play a little game where it first generates a puzzle to solve, and then we ask another instance of the model to try to solve the problem that it generated. So yeah, I'll ask it, generate, say, a 5 by 5 nonogram, where the final answer is the letter M. We'll see what it comes up with. All right, we see it just gave us a little puzzle. We'll go ahead and copy this, open up another window of 01, ask it solve the following puzzle, and let's say visualize the answer in some pretty way. Why not? So he's making the puzzles and teaching the AI to solve the puzzles logically. It's amazing to see how a model can generate and solve such a puzzle, especially one that spells out the letter M. I love how Nonogram, Sudoku, and Crosswords challenge us to think critically and backtrack when necessary. It's fascinating to see AI tackle these kinds of tasks so effectively. This puzzle doesn't look like it's, it's too hard, but the, the way that a Nonogram works is for each row and each column, you're given a list of numbers, and the numbers tell you how many squares are filled in. And if the squares are consecutive, then you'll see like a two for two consecutive squares. If there's a space between them, you'll see a one comma one. And so you're supposed to just try to figure out which squares you indeed have to fill in. And it looks like the model got this right. Illustrated a nice little letter M. But I think one of the things that is like nice about examples like this is it, it, it's similar to like Sudoku or a crossword, for example, where you have to kind of make a guess and then see if that's a right guess or a wrong guess, and then backtrack if you get it wrong. And so any type of task where you kind of have to search through a space where you have different pieces pointing in different directions, but there are mutual dependencies. So you might get a, a bit of information that tells you that these two pieces contradict each other. Like a model like O1 is really good at trying to refine the search space here. 
Now let's see the final demo where the team behind this model talks some interesting stuff. We're starting a series of new models uh, with the new name O1. And this is to highlight the fact that you might feel different uh, when you use uh, O1 as a, compared to previous models uh, such as GPT-4.0. So as others will explain later, O1 is a reasoning model. So it will think more before answering your question. We are releasing two models, O1 Preview, which is to preview what's coming for O1, <laughs> and O1 Mini, which is a faster, slow, smaller and faster model that is trained with a similar framework as O1. So we hope you like our new naming scheme, O1. <laughs> so what, what is reasoning anyway? Uh, so one way of thinking of reasoning is that uh, there are times where we ask questions and we need answers immediately because they're simple questions. For example, <laughs> if you ask what's the capital of Italy, you know the answer is Rome and you don't really have to think about it much. Even though I'm fascinated by how capable these models are getting at mathematics, but I feel like models like this one would kind of kill off the ability of our kids to be good at mathematics. In a few years' time, most probably, they won't even have the most foundational knowledge of mathematics. Because now kids have these AI models on their phones, where they can just go and take a picture of a math problem, upload it, and it gives them the answer. So it's like, in probably I'd say five years, if not now, our kids are not even going to have to learn. They're not even going to know how to do math at all. But if you um, wonder um, about a complex puzzle or you want to write a really good business plan, um, you want to write a novel, you probably want to think about it for a while. And the more you think about it, the better the outcome. So reasoning is the ability of turning thinking time into better outcomes, whatever the task you're doing. It's been going on for a long time, but I think what's really cool about research is there's that aha moment. There's that particular point in time where something surprising happens and things really click together. Are there any times for you all when there was, you had that aha moment? There was a first moment when the moment was hot off the press. We started talking to the model and people were like, wow, this, this model is really great and starting doing, doing something like that. And I think that there, there, there was a certain moment in our, in our training process where we trained, like put more compute in our world than before and train first of all generating coherent chains of thought. And we saw, wow, this, this looks like something meaningfully different than before. And I think, I think for, for me, this is the moment. Uh, wow. I think related to that, so, uh, when we think about like training a model for reasoning, one thing that immediately jumps to mind is you could have humans write out their thought process and train on that. Um, when aha moment for me was like when we saw that if you train the model using RL to generate and hone its own chain of thought, it can do even better than having humans write chains of thought for it. And that was an aha moment that you could really scale this uh, and explore models reasoning that way. For a lot of the time that I've been here, we've been trying to make the models better at solving math problems, as an example. And we've put a lot of work into this and we've come up with a lot of different methods. But one thing that I kept, like every time I would read these outputs from the models, I'd always be so frustrated that uh, the model just would never seem to question what was wrong or when it was making mistakes or things like that. But one of these early uh, O1 models, when we trained it and we actually started talking to it, we started asking it these questions and it was scoring higher on these math tests we were giving it, we could look at how it was reasoning and you could just see that it started to question itself and have really interesting reflection. And that was a moment for me where I was like, wow, like we've, we've uncovered something different. This is going to be something new. And, and it was just like one of these coming together moments that, that, that was really powerful. Thank you and congrats on releasing this.